When was the last time you used your Synology for something more exciting than backups? Have you ever thought about running virtual machines on your NAS? Maybe trying out a new Linux distro, or maybe you want to run Ubuntu as a VM so you can have a web server. Well, if you happen to have a Synology NAS, you're in luck. Stay tuned and we'll show you how it works. Today on Mac Tech, we're going to review installing virtual machines on the Synology NAS, uh, specifically the 920 Plus, which is what I am using currently. Uh, this four bay NAS has an Intel Celeron J41254 core, uh, two gigahertz chip, uh, has four gigabytes of RAM, and it has 16 terabytes of storage. And I am running Disk Station Manager 7.2.2. Point such and such and such. Uh, the Disk Station Manager has its own dedicated virtual machine manager that we're going to access by clicking up on this main menu up here. And then we're going to go down to where it says Virtual Machine Manager here. If you don't have it installed, you can go back to Package Center and then you can type in virtual machine manager and it will come up. First, we have our overview, which is sort of like a dashboard and that presents all the different resources available on your NAS, gives you the CPU and the RAM that's available, tells you your network connections, as well as how many VMs you have available, your storage pools, and it does tell us, I'm, I have a warning, but that's just because one of the VMs isn't started like it should, which is not a big deal at all. If we go over to virtual machines, this is going to list all of our current VMs and also where you can create, deploy, and import the VM. And we'll discuss that a little bit more. Currently, I have a couple uh, distros of Linux. I have a Windows 95 I was monkeying with. Uh, Windows 11, Windows 10. Next down on the left is Cluster. And this is if you have more than one Synology that you would like to connect to run your virtual machines or move them over or migrate them. Below that, you have storage where you configure the storage pools for your VMs, followed by network, which is where you can configure any virtual networks you might want for your VMs. And the reason you might want to use your VMs on a virtual network is security, isolation. Uh, as an example, under virtual machines, I have a Windows 95 that I would want to put on a virtual LAN that does not have internet access because uh, Windows 95 is not something you want on the internet these days. That's another reason, but you know, isolation for security purposes, if you have different types of VMs or you have different departments that you're working with, you want to isolate your VMs with. And then you have image, and this is where you're going to store all of your VM ISOs. You can upload them on here, you can transfer them over, and this is also where you can download Synology's uh, guest tool, which is ideal for Windows because it has a lot of the Windows virtual drivers. It's a, a good support for the Windows operating system. And then beneath that we have protection, and protection is if you want to create any type of snapshots locally on your NAS. So if I click on create, I have a local snapshot I can use, or I also have a Virtual Machine Manager Pro license that I can also purchase. And if we click on VM Pro Required, if we click on that and then click on Learn More, it gives us all of the differences between the current VM we have on our Synology and then the VM Manager Pro. You can have a number of different VMs and additions to the one you have locally. So it's a very nice to have. And this would give you additional options to store more snapshots. You have 32 to start out with, with the local VMs, and then you can have an additional 255 snapshots if you want per VM. That's not total snapshots, that's per VM, which is pretty good. On B&H's website, pricing runs from 184 for one year and three nodes to 1649 for a five-year agreement and you would get seven nodes with that so to get started on creating a new vm first we'll need to make sure we have storage allocated for the different vms and that we have downloaded the isos that we need so let's go ahead and click on storage and as you can see i already have 
a storage pool allocated. I have 315 gigabytes that I have allocated for this virtual disk, which is probably overkill. But if you have not done that, you just have to click on add, and then you can tell it how much you want to allocate for VMs. This is where they're gonna be run and stored. If this is your first time using a virtual machine or running virtual machines on any device, you would probably be fine with allocating around maybe 100 to 200 gigabytes, depending on what types of VMs you're running. If it's just Linux, then you're probably okay with 100. Again, it just depends on how many and what type. Next, we'll click on image. An image is where you're going to be storing all of your ISO files as well as your disk images. Now, ISOs are your exact copies of your CDs or what you are downloading from Ubuntu or from the Microsoft Store to get your operating systems. Uh, we also have, or there's also the possibility of having what are called OVA files, which are sort of pre-made, pre-configured virtual machines. They have all of the apps ready, they have all of the desktop settings, all of your configurations already ready to go. So that's another option you have that Synology supports. As you can see, we already have our image of Ubuntu 24.04.2, which is what we're going to be using for today's purposes. And so we'll go up to Virtual Machine and we'll click on Create and we'll click on Linux as our option, but we also have Microsoft Windows. We also have a virtual DSM image. So if you wanted to create another virtual machine for our disk station manager, we have that option. We'll go ahead and click on Next and we'll select our storage pool here. And this is gonna go pretty much the same as a regular hypervisor. And we'll put in two CPUs, we'll put in two gigabytes of memory, which should be more than enough. We'll use the VGA video card, machine type PC, virtual machine priority normal, that's fine. If you wanna put in a description of the virtual machine, you can put it in down here. We'll go ahead and click on next. And then for virtual disk, this is how much storage we want allocated specifically for this virtual machine. For Linux, you're probably fine with 25, 30 gigabytes, maybe less. If you're running a Windows, you wanna be upwards of 50, I would recommend at least. So we'll click on next. And then network is default VM network. If you have other virtual machines that you have designated, as we mentioned before, that's a good way to uh, select it here. Click on next. And then ISO for boot up, we'll click on the drop down and click on Ubuntu 2404.2. You can also upload these to any shared folder on your Synology. So if you have them in another location, you just click on browse and select where you have it. Additional ISO file, click on the drop down, and this is where you can select your guest tool, and that's more designed for Windows than Linux. Auto start, we're gonna click on yes. So that means that whenever the Synology reboots, it'll automatically start. Legacy BIOS is fine. Keyboard layout default, that's fine. Serial, that's fine. Virtual USB controller. So if you want to take a USB drive and plug it into your, to your Synology and one of the USB ports, you can use that as a USB device. So all that's done, we'll click on next. And then we're gonna give users access mostly myself, click on next, and then it's gonna give us a summary, and we'll power on the machine after creation, so click on done, and it is booting up. And now it's gonna go ahead and boot up, and it's powering on. So let's go ahead, we're gonna click on connect here, and that's gonna launch, uh, launch a VNC window or a VNC session and we're gonna to get to this screen where it's gonna ask us to try or install. We're gonna click on enter, and then it's gonna continue with the boot up process, and it's going to bring us into the setup. Okay, so it tells us there is a update available after we've run a, a basic install of the keyboards and the wired connection. We're gonna click on skip for now, and then it's gonna ask us if we want to install or just try. We're gonna to continue to try it for right now. But we can always come back to that. And then it's gonna put us on the desktop. And here we have our browser, we have our Thunderbird mail client, we have our files. 
Uh, we click on our App Center here, and we can put on more applications for our productivity if we want to install LibreOffice, which I th actually think is already installed on here. Uh, additional games if we want to. So everything is working just fine. We have our settings, we have our terminal. So everything is here that you would find in a normal Linux distribution. This is a full version. And then we have an option in the lower right hand corner to install Ubuntu from the test version that we're currently running. So I did a video a few weeks ago about installing a Windows 11 virtual machine on Proxmox and the configuration steps are pretty similar to what we saw on the Synology except that I was able to allocate 8 gigabytes of RAM on the Proxmox server versus just 2 gigabytes on the Synology and running Windows 11 on 2 gigabytes of RAM is pretty excruciating. So I decided to just focus on Linux for this walkthrough. Anyway, that's gonna do it today for the video. As always, make sure that you're subscribed to Mackie Tech and you give this video a thumbs up to keep those algorithms humming. Also, if you have a technical project or want additional support with one of my tutorials, please head over to my Patreon page and consider supporting me. As always, don't forget to check out my other VM videos up here. Thank you all for watching and we'll be talking to you again very soon.